Good morning. Thank you for watching our digital sermon. Um, I bet you're glad to be at home in your pajamas, get more coffee. If you don't like a song, you can fast forward through it. But welcome to Pelham Road Baptist Church. We're a very welcoming church here. And yeah, welcome. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this Sunday. Lord, we come before you first and foremost with hearts of gratitude. 
You've seen us through another week of new beginnings. Lord, help us start this bright embarking with you. Stir in us a deep desire to come into further relationship with you. Remind us that it's not solely by going to Sunday service or worshiping online that we worship and come before you. Rather, it's through the daily communion with you, through relationships and prayer and serving our neighbor that we best worship you. Help us discover ways to be loved in the places of this world that are lacking love. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Sunday morning to you, Pelham Road. Well, this morning, we're going to be reading a passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, beginning with verse 18. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, it's not quite as holy but it is a part of our American canon. But these are words from Thomas Jefferson, written on July the 12th, 1816. I'm not an advocate for frequent changes in laws and constitutions, but laws and institutions must go hand in hand with the progress of the human mind. As that becomes more developed, more enlightened, as new discoveries are made, new truths discovered, and manners and opinions change, with the change of circumstances, institutions must advance also to keep pace with their times. We might as well require a man to wear still the coat which fitted him when a boy as a civilized society to remain ever under the regime of their barbarous ancestors. <laughs> you got to love Jefferson's turn of a phrase there. This quote is found at the Jefferson Memorial in Washington, and it's rather straightforward. As new discoveries arrive, society must adjust its laws or else it will be imprisoned by its forefathers. Isn't it just like Jefferson, <laughs> the father of liberty, to even free us from the laws he wrote, if at some future point circumstances demand? Now, Jesus' words that I read from Matthew's Gospel Give the church the same duty to apply the values of God's kingdom to an ever-evolving world. As usual, the Savior is well ahead of his time. Jesus understood who would inherit his kingdom, the future. And instead of tying us to archaic relics, Jesus frees us to loose and bind depending on the circumstances and the times. 
Jesus says this sentence, and I suppose most of us can digest it pretty easily except for one word. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What scares us the most about this dangerous passage is that word, you. Jesus is delegating. Whatever you bind, whatever you loose. The establishment of this kingdom depended upon the act of Jesus. A cross, an empty grave, Jesus could break us out of prison, but he'd leave it up to us once we got past the wall. This is called responsibility. We have something to do. Now, binding and loosing is a, it's a Jewish expression. Uh, it appears in the New Testament. Uh, the practice of binding and loosing is uh, forbidding or permitting. And Jesus over heard this from the rabbis. It was probably pretty common language for the rabbis in that day. And what the scripture does is the scripture can say. That's what the scripture can do. It says it. Jewish legal scholars were given the power to determine what the written law meant. There's a difference. Scripture can say, but the scholars would say what it meant. After all, the law was written centuries earlier. The authority for deciding uh, which direction to go or how to proceed forward in any given moment in time, that was given to the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin had the authority to bind or to loose. So when Jesus tells his followers to bind or to loose, it is the giving away of this responsibility to you and I to interpret the sacred for our day. I mean, that's quite the responsibility. The scripture still speaks, but we are given the responsibility to say what it means. In the Gospel of Matthew earlier, Jesus had already been reading scripture and binding or loosing. Jesus is reviewing the law and he says, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder. Anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or a sister will be subject to judgment. You see, Jesus is taking the written word of the law and saying, you know, this is binding. In fact, Jesus is going further. He's saying, this is more binding than you first imagined. Because he later will say, if you're offering a gift at the altar, and there, and there you remember that you have a brother or a sister who has something against you, leave your gift. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and give your gift. I mean, Jesus is not just saying that this is binding, he's sort of upping the ante that it's not just about murder. But there's more. Jesus is also loosening the law. There are plenty of stories in the New Testament about Jesus and his encounter with the Sabbath. I mean, one day you'll remember his disciples are picking some grain on the Sabbath and they're violating the Sabbath law and it doesn't take someone long to point that out to Jesus and say, hey, why are your disciples not following the law? Now, another occasion, Jesus uh, heals a man on the Sabbath. He has a withered hand, I believe. And this also brings ridicule. Eventually, all of this pushing and confrontation comes to a boil because Jesus is trying to loosen the law in regards to the Sabbath. And finally, Jesus says this, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good? At this point, Jesus seems to be loosening the written word. And saying that it's not just about how many steps you take on the Sabbath. 
Worshiping God and taking a Sabbath should not keep you from doing good. So Jesus, if you read his words, he both at times binds and at times loosens. And according to Matthew, he now turns to the church, his disciples, his family, his body, his hands and his feet. And he says, now you fellows and ladies have this responsibility. We inherit this duty. What we say is necessary and important, well, that's binding. And what we judge is no longer relevant, that's loosened. Samuel Armstrong Lane is probably a name you don't know, but he discovered that you could take one person's blood and transfuse that blood into another human and save their life. It wasn't long after he discovered that that additional research showed that we had different blood types. And so this blood transfusion was able to be done safely to other people, saving their lives. But there were people during this time who said, we cannot practice blood transfusion. We just can't because it's prohibited in the Bible. When they would cite Leviticus 3.17 and Leviticus 17.10, Leviticus 19.26, Genesis 9.4, and other places, they refused to accept blood transfusions because the Bible said you can't do that. But you know what? Blood transfusions, organ transplants, they couldn't be conceived during the time of the first century. I mean, progress that neither Abraham or Moses or Jesus or Paul could have imagined. So now the church gets to interpret what this text means. And the church eventually loosens the text and says, mm, no, these blood transfusions saves life. It's an advancement. It improves life. We loosen this because it enhances life. Now in practice, reality, the church has been engaged in binding and loosening since the day Jesus passed this responsibility on to us. You know, until the 1860s, no one really thought much about the words about slavery. In Ephesians, it's written, slaves obey your earthly masters in all things as to Christ. And that was preached in the 1860s in South Carolina and Georgia and Alabama and throughout the slave-holding states. But you know, I don't hear anybody preaching about it today, even though it's still in the Bible. Clearly and justifiably and a thousand years too late, we loosed the Scripture and said, you know, that's not what it says. That's not what it means. We loose it. The church loosened the word. We know what the Bible says, but we loose it because new discoveries make slavery not a sign of discipleship, but it's harmful and dangerous, degrading and hateful. And we've also loosened everything, practically everything, concerning money in the Bible. I mean, read the book of Acts. It's portrayed as a place where believers held all things in common. If you sold possession, you sold that piece of land, well, the money was shared with all the members. No one went without. We don't practice that. We loosened that. For years, the passage of scripture about a deacon must be the husband of one wife was interpreted to be uh, one wife forever, for all time. Or it was interpreted as being just one wife when in a society you could have multiple wives. And the church for the longest time demanded that deacons of the 20th century be men, yes, men, who were not divorced and not single. 
And they did this because they thought they were practicing the Bible, at least their interpretation of the Bible. Yet today, while it varies from church to church, this passage has been radically loosened. Churches now view this passage in the light of divorce and emphasize the point of one wife at a time. And also begin to understand this passage is talking about mature adults, not just men, but men and women. Someone who is in a relationship with a person begins to learn a lot of things about maturity and about compromise and about working together. And that's the type of person that would be a good leader in a congregation, male or female, divorced or not divorced. When Jesus intersects new information, we can't see him saying anything but treat others the way you want to be treated. I mean, let's look at some of these subjects in light of just that one phrase that Jesus gave us. Treat others the way you would want to be treated. If you needed a blood transfusion to live, but without it you would die, what would you want to have done? Can you hear Jesus say, treat others exactly as you would like to be treated? And so we loosened. And if you were a slave who worked for another person without any benefit, other than staying alive, would you want to be set free or would you want to be held captive? What, what do you want? Then Jesus whispers in our ear, treat others the way you want to be treated. And so we loosened. Jesus is in the midst, always calling us to be bound to the teaching of Scripture. Treat people exactly as you would have them treat you. We do not ignore Scripture, but we are responsible to apply it to our time and our day. The Spirit of Christ is always asking us in the church to do what alleviates pain. And if that means binding, then we bind. But if it means loosening, then we should loosen. And I suspect that the best way to determine when to bind or when to loose is just to ask, what would Jesus do? Go ahead, Dave. other and love one another because love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation. Remain in Jesus Christ and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.